Monday, your world is one way, and in 24 hours, Charlie has been suspended and then he has been fired. Someone needs to take control here, and it's certainly not the president, and the damn sure isn't Steve Bannon. It's got to be the people of, of Alabama who stand up and say, enough. I called for an aggressive milestones for energy generation and called out everyone involved to make sure that we could do everything humanly possible to power Puerto Rico as quickly as possible. All right, welcome to Hour 2 of Newsmax Now. I am Bill Tucker, and co-hosting with me tonight is Newsmax Insider. He's a conservative insight, a conservative activist. Julio Rivera, he's also the editorial director at Reactionary Times. Julio has been down on the island nation of Puerto Rico. We were going to get to this last hour. I promise that we are going to get to it this hour because I really want your feedback on what is happening down there. Yes. But first, welcome back. Good to see you. It's been a while. Well, thank you so much. It, it feels good to be back on the mainland. Um, you know, obviously the conditions out here are a lot more comfortable with electricity and clean running water and things that, you know, people here take for granted at times. But, you know, in times of crisis, hum, you know, the worst humanitarian crisis in my lifetime and, and one of the worst ones in the history of the Caribbean that they're suffering through right now. You know, I, I think Puerto Rico cannot be forgotten. You know, I, I think kind of out of the news cycle, people are more yeah. interested in other issues, but we can't forget the suffering that's going on there right now, Bill. No, and, no, and we're not going to do that because I know there are a lot of professional, there are a lot of connections with, with, with mm -hmm. you down there. And in fact, why don't we just take the opportunity yeah. to get into that? Mm -hmm. Because you heard the governor of Puerto Rico. The governor of Puerto Rico was here mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., not here in the studio in Washington, <laughs> D.C. last week. Yeah. He made a request for $95 billion of U.S. taxpayer money mm -hmm. to go to the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico saying it would be, that's what we would take. Mm -hmm. I, to rebuild and restore, and you were down in Puerto Rico, and, and I, I sent you the quote. I said, I said mm -hmm. I'm curious about your reaction. Your reaction was furious. Mm -hmm. You weren't like, oh, that's great. This mm -hmm. is not a good idea. Why don't, what is, what is your reservation? What do you think has to happen to, to restore, to bring Puerto Rico back? You know, um, a, a few months ago, I was here on this program with you hosting, and it was right before Hurricane Irma hit. And it hadn't even touched on the island yet. And 300,000 uh, PREPA customers, which is the Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority, had lost service. PREPA has reached out to the bond market. They've sold public bonds. They've taken out bank loans to the tune of about $9 billion. They've always promised to redo the power grid because it was antiquated, it was weak, there were always flaws and power was going out left and right all the time. They promised wind energy, solar energy, they never completed any of these projects. PREPA had also previously gotten in trouble for doing business with Hugo Chavez's Venezuela. They were purchasing sludge oil, selling it as high grade oil to their customers for about three times what it's worth and they were uh, kicking back the profits for that to Puerto Rican local politicians who were enabling all of this so to go you're, through. So you're, you're, you're telling us, in, in, in one word, mm -hmm. it's tremendous amount of corruption. Yes. So before, and, and in fact, the FBI is investigating reports of corruption down mm -hmm. on the island now having to do with the distribution of, of, of rescue supplies, am I right? Yes, most certainly, and this has been an issue, a systematic issue with Puerto Rico um, since the supplies were already there. Listen, we've had Carmen Yulian Cruz giving press conferences standing in front of these supplies. Why are the supplies behind her and not on trucks getting out? There was an issue with the truck drivers union. They didn't want to allow non-union drivers on the road to actually deliver these supplies. Uh, the governor had actually imposed a very unnecessary curfew uh, for six, uh, 12 hours each day from 6 p.m. Uh, in the evening until 6 a.m. in the morning. They didn't want anybody out on the roads. It was counterproductive to helping the people on the island. But listen, before we give red, one red cent to Puerto Rico, and I do agree that they do need money and we do need to help the people on there, we need federal oversight. I mean, I would send people from Washington, D.C., and as a conservative, I'm the last person that would ever suggest that Washington, D.C. should go out there and oversee something on a local level, because I always believe that the local government can handle it better. But years of systematic corruption on the island of Puerto Rico merits that Washington, D.C. get involved in, even the Justice Department and Jeff Sessions. All right, that's great. And we'll get into more of that later as we go throughout the show. But right now, I want to welcome in Larry Clayman. He is a former federal prosecutor. He's the founder 
of the group Freedom Watch. Uh, he is also at freedomwatchusa.org. And Larry, welcome to the program. It is good to see you. We've got a lot of stuff to talk to you about. Don't have a whole lot of time to do it. So I'm going to squeeze it in really, really fast. Latest polls down in Alabama have Roy Moore up by six points. That seems rather incredible, given all the news that, that's happened. But it raises a very serious issue. He could win. And if he wins, you've got Mitch McConnell and a number of Republicans in the Senate saying they are going to reject him. They're not going to let him stay. Well, it's two issues that come to mind here. One is, first of all, these are the, this is the guy Alabama decided they wanted to put in, if that's what happens. That's, this is their decision, not mm -hmm. any of ours, okay? And second, legally, can the Senate say, no, we're, we're not going to seat this guy or recognize him? Depends what the definition of is is in many ways. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Larry. I really appreciate that. <laughs> right. Legally, legally, uh, they may perhaps have a point that they can do this, but it won't hold up. They tried this once with Adam Clayton Powell. It failed many years ago when I was a young boy. You were a young boy. It's not going to work. And McConnell doesn't have the guts to do that. I mean, the guy's got no guts at all in any respect. Mm -hmm. He's not going to go up against the will of the people in Alabama and alienate the Tea Party and alienate the conservative Republican base. So as a practical matter, he can threaten all he wants, but he's not going to avoid having to seat uh, Roy Moore, Judge Roy Moore. Yeah, and you said alienate the Tea Party. I mean, McConnell's done a whole a lot of that in his career as a majority leader. But, you know, one point I just wanted to make is regardless of whether or not they want a caucus, with Roy Moore, whether there's some semblance of a boycott against him, he still does get his one vote in the Senate. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? It is. You know, and I was predicting this was going to happen because this looks like a political hit. It smells like a political hit. It likely is a political hit. And let's say, you know, in Alabama, where the legal age is 16, let's say he did date or try to date some young women in those days. You know, it's been 40 years. And even the president now has come around and is supporting him. And people see that this just smells. And it's part and parcel to nearly everything the Republican establishment does. And if they want to lose their, their so-called base, at least people that will vote for them, go ahead. I don't think they have the guts to not seat Roy Moore. All right, I'm going to throw you a real big curve here, because it's not on our list of topics. But I'm sitting here waiting for the show to start again. And I, I found out that the International Criminal Court has decided it may take American soldiers to task for war crimes committed in Afghanistan. In short, it sounds like the International Criminal Court is going to decide it has, it has authority over American citizens. That comes in addition to the news earlier that was last week when we had the far left group that was being found, funded by George Soros saying they were going to commit massive amounts of money to, to elect radically left-wing liberal attorneys generals in cities and prosecutors. They've done it in Philadelphia. The goal here, and I don't have the piece of paper in front of me, is to radically overhaul the American justice system. This sounds dead serious to me. Your reaction? It is uh, dead serious. In fact, as you know, in my view, the American legal system has already been taken over. Yep. You've got 90 to 95 percent Obama and Clinton appointees. Just yesterday, Judge Oreck enjoined uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions and the Justice Department from withholding aid to, to uh, sanctuary cities. President Trump has lost every lower court decision. He did win one at the Supreme Court temporarily. But the judiciary has been infested, I mean that seriously, infested with leftist judges who don't follow the law, much more the Constitution, but follow their politics. So Soros is just going to add insult to injury. And in fact, we already have leftist prosecutors throughout the land. And I'm uh, dealing with one out there in, in Las Vegas right now. I'm helping to defend the Bundys, Clive and Bundy and yeah. his sons. Mm -hmm. A leftist prosecutor who has committed gross prosecutorial abuse. And I filed a lawsuit to force the Justice Department's Office of Professional Responsibility and Inspector General to investigate and remedy it and order Jeff Sessions to dismiss the case. Well, you let me ask you. Okay. 
Well, let me ask you, is this a failure uh, to, quote, drain the swamp? I mean, I remember at the beginning, at the outset of the administration, Jeff Sessions requesting the resignation of the federal prosecutors that were still holdovers from the Obama administration. Now, the numbers that you just read off there earlier were startling to me. I mean, why hasn't the Trump administration uh, gone forward and tried to appoint more of their own federal prosecutors? They are trying, and in fact, we're trying to assist them. We have a judicial strike force coalition. You can find that at freedomwatchusa.org. But the Democrats are blocking it. It always happens. It's very slow. It's going to be a slow process. It's going to be eight years, and let's hope President Trump gets reelected, to get more conservative judges and libertarian judges on the bench. But right now, we have radical left-wing judges, by and large. And it's very, very difficult when you bring a political case. I, there's a level playing field when I'm representing private clients and in court, you know, in business matters or other matters. But if there's a political aspect to the case, 95, 9% approximately of the judges on the federal bench are highly leftist at this point. After 16 out of the last 24 years where President Clinton was appointing judges and, of course, then President Barack Obama. Yeah, and it is interesting because I understand that, that the Trump administration has finally got its act together, presented a whole bunch of of nominees to the Senate, but I understand the Senate is sitting on top of these folks and that is not helpful and it's really strange because I keep doing the math and every time I do the math, the Republicans are still in control of the House, the Republicans are still in control of the Senate, and I believe the Republicans are still in control of Congress, but it doesn't seem that way. Larry, I've got to cut things short here, too little time with you today, but really appreciate you taking the time and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll speak to you after the holiday. Thank you. All right, we've got much more to get into, but first, Newsmax TV gives you an inside look at the Titanic Memorial in Washington, D.C. Don't go away. We'll be back.